at the very earliest stages of development, all cells are equally capable of giving rise to an entire organism. But after only a few rounds of cell division, the cells begin to lose this totipotency and to differentiate, sorting into groups that will either contribute to the placenta or to the embryo itself. In this eight-cell embryo, called a morula for its berry-like appearance, all cells express a pair of genes, CDX2 and OCT3-4. But as the cells of the morula go through their next round of division, CDX2 is downregulated in the innermost cells, while OCT3-4 remains expressed throughout. The segregation of these genes is maintained as the cells continue to divide, until after about ten rounds of division, the embryo has become a hollow ball known as a blastocyst. The outer layer of the blastocyst is made up entirely of cells that express CDX2. This trophectodermal layer will go on to become placenta. On the interior, OCT3-4 marks a small cluster of cells with phenomenal ability to differentiate. This inner cell mass is made up of cells with the developmental potential to give rise to all of the body's many cell lineages an ability known as pluripotency. And indeed, every one of the cells in your own body can trace its ancestry back to these few dozen pluripotent stem cells. The vast majority of the body's trillions of cells are differentiated, meaning they have taken on specialized properties and functions and have lost the ability to generate cells of other types. Skin, muscle, blood, bone, and the nervous system are all made up of populations of differentiated cells. There is another type of cell, however, that remains less differentiated and retains its ability to give rise to other cell types. These cells are known as stem cells. Stem cells exhibit two characteristics not found in more differentiated cells. By definition, stem cells are able to divide and make copies of themselves indefinitely, a capacity known as self-renewal. This endless power of division is not limited to creating more stem cells, however. They can also give rise to a wide range of mature cell types. These unique characteristics make stem cells indispensable, both for replenishing the body's cells as they age and are lost, and for constructing the body itself from a tiny number of cells during development. Even after the embryo has grown into an adult, many of the body's cells continually die off and need to be replaced. For example, billions of red blood cells need to be replaced each day. This is the work of stem cells known as hematopoietic stem cells, which are located in the bone marrow. Residing in a complex cellular environment, the hematopoietic stem cell is able to generate precursors to every type of blood cell. And indeed, these stem cells have been used by physicians for decades to replenish patients' blood supplies following radiation treatment for cancer. The stepwise differentiation of a stem cell's progeny depends on combinations of genetic and environmental factors that gradually steer these cells into following a specific lineage. This process involves different sets of stimulating factors operating in the cell's environment, at its surface membrane, and within its nucleus. Each step down the path draws it closer to becoming a functional red blood cell and entering the bloodstream. The lining of the small intestine turns over even faster than the blood. At the microscopic level, this epithelial surface consists of billions of projections called villi, with stem cell containing areas known as crypts near their bases. 
The intestinal crypt contains slowly dividing stem cells that maintain their own numbers while also producing rapidly dividing progenitors. These transit amplifying cells churn out all of the differentiated cell types needed to migrate upwards and replace older cells as they are shed from the tips of the villi. This constant self-renewal by stem cells is a feature of many of the body's systems, including skin, hair, and bone. Not all of the body's organs regenerate as readily as the blood and the lining of the gut, and the multipotent stem cells that have been identified in the adult body are both limited in their ability to generate other lineages and difficult to maintain in culture. In contrast, the pluripotent cells of the inner cell mass can be harvested and grown indefinitely in vitro, and can give rise to every type of cell in the body. These pluripotent cells in culture are known as embryonic stem, or ES, cells. By culturing these cells under controlled conditions, it is possible to steer their differentiation into specific cell types. For example, ES cells cultured on a bed of stromal feeder cells and treated with inductive factors such as BMP4 and sonic hedgehog tend to differentiate into neural lineages. By testing various ES cell culture conditions, scientists are gaining new insights into the biology of the differentiation processes that build and sustain and may one day be used to heal our bodies. Stem cell researchers are currently exploring ways to differentiate ES cells into lineages that are of great medical and biological interest. The nervous system, the pancreas, and the heart all regenerate too poorly to restore themselves after serious injury or degenerative disease. Scientists are now seeking ways of using the knowledge they gain every day from the study of embryonic and somatic stem cells to help save patients' lives and to improve our understanding of their seemingly limitless potential.